everybody, it's your favorite bastard, and today we're going to be doing some spicy garlic beef. So you can see, I already got some beef here. This is beef that came pre-shredded from Kroger. And if you're wanting to follow along at home, I recommend you get some carne asada or just some cheap cut of beef and cut it nice and thin or little itty bitty strips, kind of like this. So first things first, we're going to get started on marinating the meat. I do recommend you do this a little ahead of time, 20 to 30 minutes. Or if you're going to be popping it into the fridge, give it at least an hour. The cold kind of slows down the effect of the marinade. You could also just do this the day or night before you're going to cook it. So first things first, we're going to add some oil, some sesame oil specifically, just a little bit. Not a whole lot. And this is kind of main, the main ingredient. Sweet soy sauce. This is some great stuff. It's pretty thick, but it works amazing as a marinade. It's kind of a mix of molasses and soy sauce. Not a whole lot. It's rather strong. This is the other main ingredient. Chili garlic sauce. This is where it's going to get spicy. I recommend you be generous with that. Especially if you like your food spicy like I do. Horrible, horrible spicy! If you're wanting to make this just a little more sweet, add some honey. If you're wanting kind of a tangy sour component, add some lemon or lime juice. If you want to party, add some red wine. Just a little bit. Don't want to party too hard. Don't worry, we're going to use that guy in a little bit. So get a spoon or whatever kind of instrument you have, or your bare hands, and just go ahead and start mixing it all together. If you're finding things are sticking really bad, you might want to add just a little more oil to it. And you don't have to use sesame oil. You can use peanut oil or any other oil you like. Just make sure it has a decent uh, heat or smoke point so you don't have a little fire in your pan when you're frying this. All right, we separated our cloves from the big ear of garlic we had there. Now, to separate the skin or outer wrapping, generally what works pretty well is to take your knife broadside down with your palm, just give it a few good smacks. I probably could have used a little more pressure there, but that kind of breaks the skin up so it's a little easier to peel. And there you go. Now, how we're going to do this is you take the little ugly end off. And we're going to be adding this garlic straight into the meat with the marinade. So you're going to want this chunky. So something like this. Straight in there. So you don't have to be too fancy or too precise with your knife work. Just cut it up into sizable chunks, kind of how I showed you there and just straight into the mixture. The so the reason why for this particular dish, we are cutting the garlic into these big old fat chunks is because the garlic is going to be frying in the pan with our meat. And we don't want them to be cooking at separate we want them to kind of cook at the same time. Smaller pieces of garlic will cook much faster, and then you'll end up with a burnt garlic mess that doesn't taste so great. These thick pieces, they're not going to burn. They're going to roast rather evenly with the beef, and so they'll just be much more pleasant. So as I'm showing here, mix it all in just so that beef is getting exposed to the garlic. All right, and like I said earlier, just let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Let it marinate. And if you want a little more garlic, more garlic flavor, add more garlic. I was just kind of showing you how I do it. Curveball. All right, we're going to be doing some broccoli with this. Beef and broccoli is a good combo. So I'm going to recommend you buy a big, ugly stock like this. Now, most of the time you just see broccoli and it's just these, uh, these little florets. And you might get some of the root there. 
I'm going to show you how we use all of this. So what you're first going to do is separate the florets, or these uh, flowery bits, from the stalk. Pretty simple. It's like trimming hedges. You want to preserve some of that stalk. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Again, having a good sharp knife tends to make this a little easier. Well, luckily, broccoli on its own is not too tough. All right, and as you can see there, we had a little happy accident. You don't need to be perfect. Hopefully you got a nice big pile of broccoli florets and you have an ugly little stock like this. We're gonna keep this guy. What we are going to do, let me cut off that not so good looking root there. And it's a bit like peeling a potato. And if you have a vegetable peeler, go ahead and bust that out for this. Lost a little more material than I wanted to there, but no big deal. This isn't much, but when you fry it, it's going to be pretty damn good. Okay, so you could just cut these into sticks, kind of like carrot sticks, and just fry them, or even eat them raw. But we're going to do this a very particular way. I want them to stay somewhat thick. And once more there. Another one, and once more just down the center. Kind of like how you saw me cut vegetables for our fried rice recipe, but I want to keep these kind of long, so like that. We're going to be frying these guys with our broccoli. These you can use as a garnish. Now some people really don't like these because they can be particularly bitter, I understand. But you know what? Just chuck them in a container, keep them in your fridge, have them with some ranch dressing. Or specifically what we're going to do, we're going to trim these stalks down just a little bit more so they're a little smaller, and we're going to add them towards the tail end of when we're frying the beef. We add them at the end because they're just little guys and we don't want them to burn. Okay, and like I mentioned earlier, we're going to separate these smaller branches from the larger stalks. This can be a little tricky. You might want to use a smaller knife than what I'm using right now. And if you're really not confident and you're worried about hurting yourself, you can just stab them and hold them down with a fork or a similar tool. Just carefully like that. Kind of like what you should what I showed you earlier, just on a smaller scale. There we are. So we're looking for small guys like this or like this. Again, we're going to add them at the very end when we're frying the beef, just so they don't burn or overcook. And again, if you got some ugly guys like this, well, maybe not. don't include them in the dish, but they're still edible. All right, just like I've shown you before, get a pan, add some oil, get it hot, hot, hot. We're going to add our meat. So get your spatula, whatever tool you're using, and give everything a little shake just so they separate. Alright, it's really thin beef, so it's cooking rather quickly. We're going to go ahead and add the broccoli stems.
All right, go ahead and add your little broccoli florets or crowns. Don't have to add all of them. And just like you have been, give it a stir. Make sure it's getting its time to soak in some of the sauce from your pan there. All right, when you feel in your heart that it's done or just when it's looking ready, go ahead and pull it. Okay, we got a bowl of rice here ready to go. Now, seems like I do rice really often in my videos. Well, it's cheap, it's available, it's easy to do. You can, of course, just eat the uh, beef on its own, maybe add some other vegetables to it, or have some fruit on the side, or even do some noodles. There will come a time when I show you how to do some Asian-style noodles, but for now, rice is our old standby. All right, once you got your rice or just whatever starch you got plated up, Go ahead and add your beef. All right, that's a beautiful mound right there. All right, we're gonna make a little dressing. You may have seen me do this in other videos, but we're gonna add some ponzu sauce. A little bit of lime juice. Just a little bit. And some sesame oil. Yeah, not a whole lot of that. This is a nice little dressing to put over some of your Asian dishes that's just a little different from your typical soy sauce or teriyaki sauce. You want to try to give it a mix or a little stir because the oil doesn't always want to mix with the other ingredients, but just go ahead and drizzle it over. And and there you have it, some spicy garlic beef ready to eat. Thank you for watching.